Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show, Serving Nerve, where we talk about whatever we want. And today we're going to be going through more fat acceptance cringe compilations and seeing what we can cringe at the hardest. But uh, you already know what the show is all about right now, so uh, let's just get into it. Yeah! Okay, before I have this girl talking, I'm just going to read this comment here. The comment says, I don't understand, question mark. Excess calories is what can cause weight gain, though. Please explain. Uh, so, there's so many reasons that someone can gain weight without having excess calories or more calories than a thin person. You can look those up. Like, it's there's lots of conditions that have weight gain. But there is one that I know of, and that's a uh, Prader-Willi syndrome. It's a genetic issue, and it usually results in a lot more than just weight gain. But one of the symptoms is you cannot you cannot feel fullness at all so you just are constantly hungry one of the symptoms is you literally will be constantly hungry and you can't satisfy your appetite and it's usually linked with a bunch of like uh you know it's like an actual like genetic issue it's it's very concerning uh, it's very rare and it also causes you to have low muscle tone which decreases your metabolism as well so so it's very like problematic and difficult for the individuals and the entire families to deal with um, you also have things like PCOS and endometriosis, but it's arguable as to if those inherently cause weight gain or if the hormone issues are related to weight gain or made worse with weight gain or what. And outside of that, you can have maybe like rare situations where your hypothalamus or your thyroid's not working. You can have hypothyroidism pretty easily if you just like don't even get enough iodine in your diet. So if you guys are having issues with weight, maybe check what iodine sources you have in your diet. Also, you can have issues if you get too much iodine though. So I'd recommend talking to a real medical professional because I don't know Jack. And uh, there are issues you can have, definitely. But none of these issues actually do bypass the laws of thermodynamics. Calories are just a measure of energy and there is a certain threshold of energy usage that your body has. If you exceed that, your body will likely try to store some of those calories, not all of them, but some of those calories as like fat. This depends on a series of variables, like if you're in a calorie deficit, what macronutrients you're getting the calories from, because there's different types of genesis, like gluconeogenesis, de novo lipogenesis. Like there's all this stuff that your body has to try and do to convert anything into fat. So there are all these metabolic pathways you have to kind of look at too. And then there are other variables, like what are your glycogen stores at, you know, uh, how many calories did you burn in that day? Are you physically active commonly? Because then your body might utilize calories differently. Um, how much fiber are you getting? Some calories are expelled through waste. There are a lot of variables when it comes to like, you know, actually assessing how many calories the body absorbs, how many calories the body absorbs, how many calories are burned and expelled and how many are just there and how many you'll gain fat from and whatever. So yes and no, but also if you do have an excess of calories, usually a consistent overconsumption that will result in weight gain, typically in the form of fat. It also depends on if you're like building muscle or something like that, but you're also going to gain some fat even if you're building muscle and all that. So I'm sorry I'm going off, but yeah, you will gain weight if you eat too many calories. That's just what it is. Um, there are a lot of variables. It's not that black and white. It's very complex because it does involve a series of things, hormones, genetics, consumption methods, uh, macro and micronutrients, nutritional bioavailability, all kinds of things. But at the end of the day, calories are calories and they can result if you overconsume them consistently in significant weight gain. So that's just what it is. But the thing is, it's based in sustainability and it's not sustainable long-term to just do calories in, calories out. Your body will gain the weight back. 95% of people who intentionally lose weight through dieting and exercise, keyword intentional, gain the weight back and more within five years. So we've assessed this and it really does come from yo-yo dieting mainly and you know lifestyle changes are not calculated in this mix and the 95% is not accurate. But saying that, I have to point out the one thing that is true is usually people who just do calorie counting and they don't look at a good dietary change or an overall change in their nutrition and they just try and count calories usually to a very low number, they find that it is unsustainable and a lot of people struggle with it. Some people really can pull it off. I've pulled it off before. Tons of other people can do it as well. But at the end of the day, it really is just dependent on the person. Some people can really struggle and they usually need things like, you know, another kind of dietary change, like just eating a healthier diet, uh, completely cutting out certain food groups or foods, performing portion control, working on other things like stress, alcohol consumption, drinking consumption, soda consumption, fast food, cutting out fast food. There are all these things people can do to lose weight and be healthy. But the thing I'm pointing out is some people do struggle with calorie counting. So it just depends. But at the end of the day, calorie counting can and does oftentimes work. And the stuff about the 95% and all diets failing and all this stuff is just not accurate. That usually pertains to things like yo-yo dieting more so than anything else. 
So it's not as simple as just calories in, calories out. It's as simple as making sure you're eating a varied diet, making sure you're moving your body, and not trying to just make yourself thinner for the sake of it. That's sustainable health. Calories in, calories out might work temporarily, but your body will bounce back to its set point weight, unless you're a big outlier. You know what? She's not even 100% wrong. Now, the body bouncing back to a set point weight, uh, it's a little subjective there because set point is just a theory and we don't exactly know what everything entails when it comes to set point. We don't actually know everything when it comes to set point theory and there are variables you can modify like diet and exercise to change your body's natural set point and where it tends to fall. But generally speaking, I do agree with her regarding uh, some of the things like, you know, a sustainable change, like working on healthy things, like, you know, diet and exercise and making sure that you're active and taking care of your body and doing healthy things. That will help as well. So you don't have to do calorie counting to be successful in this. And I do appreciate some of the things she's saying because I know where she's coming from and she's not 100% right. She's not always on the money here, but she's a little bit close to it, you know? This isn't the worst. This isn't super cringy. It's just somebody's uh, poor perception and a slight appeal to futility when it comes to body weight and the idea of dieting not working at all just because, you know, 95% of yo-yo diets fail. Um, it's just not quite accurate. Your body will bounce back to its set point weight, unless you're a big outlier. There was once a time where I used to think I was bad for wanting more. Why am I still hungry? Why can't I have the willpower to not want more? Why do I feel hungry again? Usually it's because the diet you're eating is inadequate a lot of the time, but saying that I completely understand this because there is a lot of shame, and I've also felt this before, there's shame in the idea of not being satisfied. You know, I always grew up eating like triple the amount that my siblings ate, and I used to look down on myself a lot for that because I was a slightly bigger kid. I wasn't really that big when I was a little one. It wasn't like anything worthy of a level of concern. I was just like a little chubby baby chub kid, you know? But both of my sisters were hella skinny, and like they did used to call me fat, they called me fat in school, like I got called fat whenever. So I would always be like, well, why am I like this, you know? And it, it sucks. And then, you know, I've always been that person who needs like two portions of food or always just needs a little more. Like I've just naturally been always like that. And I do tend to burn a lot of calories. So it isn't surprising, but it is one of those things where you do associate shame with going back for seconds. So I have my sympathies for these individuals because you aren't satisfied. Saying that a little bit of dietary change might help with that, eating more fiber, protein, you know, eating more whole foods that can help kind of put things in the right direction for you. But I have my sympathies, it's difficult. It took a long time for me to learn that hunger is okay. Food is a basic human need. Hunger should not make us feel mad with ourselves. So I am here to tell you, fill up your plate. Go get seconds and thirds. Eat until you're full and satisfied. Eat what you really desire. Because you deserve to have a good relationship with food and your body, despite diet culture telling us otherwise. Your body just wants to take care of itself. Are you allowing it to? I don't 100% hate that either, honestly. It's not the worst mentality to have. You know, you should eat when you're hungry. Like, you should. You should eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. I know it's a little bit harder to do for some people, but it is what it is. But there are times where also people do kind of mix up the idea of being emotionally, like, wanting something to satisfy themselves or having issues with binge eating or overeating excessively, unnecessarily, and they kind of associate that all with, I'm just hungry, I'm just hungry, when in reality it could be something else. You could also have a really inadequate diet and then need, like, extra food because you're not not eating the right kinds of food and that is an issue with being satisfied because you're not eating enough healthy and nutritious whole foods but saying that I don't think people should beat themselves up and feel ashamed when they want a different amount of food or they want a second portion or something because that is a bad mentality to have and although being moderate and having temperance is a very good thing and also a very virtuous thing to involve yourself with. There is that balance where you don't wanna be beating yourself up when you want a second portion of food. And I do have my sympathies for individuals who struggle with this because feeling that kind of shame does suck. And like, I personally can level with people on that front. It does suck. But again, you gotta find that balance, my people. There are certain things where, you know, you're gonna to wanna to eat it, need it, need it. And there are certain times where you're gonna to have to put your foot down and say no, particularly with hyper-processed diets and hyper-palatable food. I'm just saying. And the other thing I have to point out, with this last bit, your body can take care of itself. It can, it's very good at regulating itself. Your body and your brain are very smart when it comes to, you know, upregulation and downregulation for certain things, but you have to give it the right ingredients. 
You have to expose yourself to consistently drinking water, being physically active in some capacity, and also eating a generally healthy diet because that's how it's going to understand its hunger and fullness cues. If you continually just eat hyper-processed food, you will not reap the rewards that your body can provide you through just down-regulating and up-regulating for itself. Homeostasis is a thing. Your body's pretty smart at understanding how to do things, but you do have to expose it to things like fiber and protein and all that kind of stuff to kind of get it going. So I'm just saying, my people, I can appreciate this. I've got my sympathies, but there is that balance that you gotta find. Ugh, I ate so much today. I probably won't eat it all tomorrow. Yeah, I peed so much today. I just won't pee tomorrow. What? Well, I mean, like, I just really indulged myself and peed a lot, so I don't think I, I deserve it. But you have to. Like, your body needs to go. And your body needs to eat. You need to eat tomorrow, no matter how much you ate yesterday or today or whatever. I do actually think that you should be eating every day. Like even if you have binge eating issues or something like that, you shouldn't be restricting yourself of food for an entire day. Um, I think that it builds a really bad like binge restrict mentality for most people. I know some people don't really struggle with that kind of thing, but a lot of people do. And I think it builds a really unhealthy mindset around food and makes this like overly compensatory like behavioral pattern and it's not smart. Um, but saying that, you know, this kind of comes from like the eating disorder recovery community, I think. And also like the binge eating recovery community. It's like they always compare it to something like another natural bodily function to show how illogical it is to think like, I'm not gonna eat tomorrow or anything like that. They compare it to things like peeing, breathing, holding your breath. So it's like, you know, they'll say like, oh, I breathed so much today. I breathed a lot of air. I can't breathe any air tomorrow. I'm gonna have to hold my breath really hard tomorrow. Things like that, basically. And they also actually use this comparison. They say like, can you imagine sucking all your air through a straw or being underwater for a long time and then needing to take like a really big gasp of air to kind of compensate? It's the same way they talk about like eating, basically in the eating disorder recovery communities. It's like when you restrict yourself down really hard, your body's gonna wanna whiplash you back and say, hey, like I need a lot of food now, like I need even more. So it gets that really like crazy extreme on one end, extreme on the other end. And you don't wanna be on those ends. So you wanna find that balance and take yourself to that middle ground. So I do understand. I do find it a little cringy that we always compare it to peeing though, but I understand. The thing is these cringe compilations, they are a little cringy, but these past few videos, seem like they're very much on the, I need to recover from the yo-yo dieting, the binge eating, the eating disorder stuff. So I've got my sympathy for these individuals because they've probably come from some very bad extremes and very bad, like, you know, compensatory mindsets. But at the same time, you still need to find that balance for what a healthy diet is, even if you're coming from these extremes. So I hope they find that because it is very important. It's very important to have a good, long standing and moderate life. Your body needs food even if you're not moving around a lot. Okay, love you. You probably know someone who's thin, but they eat a lot and exercise very little. So why is it so wild to think that you also probably know someone who's fat, but eats very little and exercises a lot? Um, usually I would hear people say this and not really follow it very much. Like the people I know who have great bodies and don't like exercise a lot, and also eat a lot. They don't actually eat as much as you think they do. Like I'll use my roomie as an example here. He's a pretty lean guy, but he eats very, very moderate portions. And he also is pretty active, even though he doesn't work out, he's always out walking his dogs. And he also works a pretty like, you know, walk oriented job. But at the same time, he does say he eats a lot of food. I'm also in that same boat. I think to myself, I'm like, I'm not very physically active right now. And I eat a lot of food and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I also work out and I work a pretty strenuous job. So in the grand scheme of things, it's just based on your perception. I do usually eat a lot more though. So it's surprising that I'm not like morbidly obese. I eat a lot, but I also eat pretty decently healthy foods. And I also am usually exercising every single day. I'm probably doing like an hour of cardio on my exercise bike while I edit these videos. So that's literally how I edit my videos, my dude. I, uh, if you don't notice this, pardon the tech, that exercise bike right there, that is something I'm sitting on quite commonly when I edit my videos. So, you know, I'm usually endeavoring to be pretty active and healthy. And also like I live in an area where going out for a walk is an absolute pleasantry. And at the same time, I also work an active job. And I also try to do a little weight training here and there. In spite of my excessive caloric consumption, there's usually some form of compensation going on just due to my lifestyle. But also when it comes to you being fat and you know eating very little and exercising a lot, 
I think it's kind of unsustainable when I hear people do that. They don't do it very consistently. And also they still eat pretty hyper-processed diets. They get in a lot of calories somewhere. Maybe they don't eat a lot, but they drink a lot of something. They drink a lot of soda or something like that. Or they have an issue where they're binging and stuff. So they'll have like one meal a day and it doesn't look like a lot, but they're actually eating quite a lot and they don't realize it. And you can also have some people who just naturally have higher and lower metabolisms. There is some variability there, but you also just have people who have no idea what they're talking about. So there is a threshold here. No human on planet Earth who eats properly and exercises enough, at the very least goes for a walk, is not going to be morbidly obese unless they have a severely imbalanced diet of some kind. And I have to point that out. You've got a lot of people who are saying, why am I so fat? I eat so healthily. I don't eat very much. I exercise a lot, but they really just aren't. And then you've got other people who are like, I'm so skinny. Why can't I put on any weight? And they're actually not eating very much and they're very active in their lives. So I just find that people are more likely than to be defined of thermodynamics and to be some kind of anomaly. They're more likely just unaware of what they're doing or they're in denial about what they're doing. Hope that makes sense. Fat phobes love to tattle on themselves. This is on a video about how being afraid of being fat is inherently fat phobic. She's like, I don't agree. I'm like, that's fat phobia. She's like, actually, it's because I want to be able to walk upstairs without being out of breath. That's embarrassing. I mean, bro, like, I don't understand. Like, you can say it's fat phobic, but I don't really understand the entire point of this. Why are we so worried about fat phobia? Oh, it's because it's supposed to be that we aren't discriminating against other people for being fat. We should always aspire to be able to respire. So if we personally have a fear of ourselves getting fat because we think it's unhealthy, or, you know, we just don't want to be fat, I think we need to look at the big picture here and actually look at what hurts people. And I don't think that wanting to be healthy hurts fat people or is fat phobic towards fat people. It's not like you're saying that fat people are terrible people. It's not like you're saying that you're fat and you should be ashamed of yourself. It's not anywhere close to saying anything mean to anybody. It's just you wanting better for yourself because you personally don't want to be in the position that other people are in at times and you don't want to struggle the way that you've seen other people struggle. I think it's a very reasonable perspective to have, and I don't think people should be upset about that. And I don't think people should be worried or feel scared about it or feel like they're fat phobic because they wanna be able to breathe and walk up a flight of stairs. I don't think it's that deep. And if you wanna call it fat phobic, you can, but honestly, it doesn't really do anything. Calling something like that fat phobic is kind of like belittling the entire concept of fat phobia being you're bullied because you're fat. People discriminate against you because you're fat. People look down on you because you're fat. Using a term like phobia, using a term like racism, homophobia, fat phobia, ableism, all of these terms, the more you use them, the more you can devalue them if you don't use them in the right way. And I'm telling you this because it's very important to ascribe the value to those words so that using them is a powerful thing. If you use a word excessively, it devalues it. If you use a word excessively and out of context or inaccurately, it will devalue the word and make people not look at it like it's any bit serious. So you do need to kind of rethink what you would be calling it. You could call it ignorant. You could call it foolish. You could disagree. You can choose other words to describe things. And I think that using the concept of fat phobia in this context isn't gonna really help you and it's not really gonna help your movement. So that's just my opinion. Tell me what you think in the comments below, my people. That's the video. Personally, I think some of these are a little bit more cringy than others, but some of this is actually people going through a legitimate struggle, and I think we should respect that. It's very easy to just point the finger and be like, this belongs on a fat phobic compilation and all that, but sometimes these are just people struggling with shit, and uh, you know, it is what it is. So I don't know. Um, but tell me what you think in the comments below about these people, about these things. Have you had any of these struggles similarly? And what do you think? Uh, but yeah, that's it. So uh, it's been lovely, my people. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll talk to you next time. Slater.